miserable. Uh, but yet it's, it's demanding, it's working stuff that demands so much of our time. And the Apostle Paul, that even after sin, he does not degrade or diminish work. In fact, there in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10, uh, he said that if a man does not work, neither should he eat. As the early church was very conscientious about those less fortunate among them, such as widows, such as the fatherless, such as other individuals of physical limitations of where they could not work and they would care for them and supply for them. And, and Paul said that's good, but if there's somebody that can work and won't work, they don't eat. And they need to get out and hustle their own grub. And if you don't supply to them, they'll get hungry enough. Yeah. So work is not an evil thing. It's a necessary thing. It's even a God-ordained thing. But church, it's so easy to allow work to come in and to rob us of our time of more necessary and more important things. Yeah, uh, you know, give the time to the demanding stuff, uh, but don't let it uh, get a stronghold and a, a throat hold on you and, and you become the servant of and it destroys everything else in your life. Not, not only our employment but emergencies. Obviously they would come under demanding stuff and, and uh, certainly Jesus was involved in many emergency situations. His uh, disciples out on a ship a storm and they're about to drown and here he comes and uh, Jarius' daughter is about to die and he goes seeking the Lord and the woman with the issue of blood intercepts him and he, uh, he she is healed by touching him and Jarius' daughter dies and he goes and his good friend Lazarus, I mean everywhere you turn Jesus was dealing with emergencies but he shows us how that you cannot allow these things to destroy your relationship with your heavenly father. You cannot allow yourself to get, to allow the king to get lost in demanding stuff regardless of how demanding they are. There's not only demanding stuff, but there is dutiful stuff. Now what I mean by dutiful stuff, it's stuff that you feel obligated. You feel it's your duty. And a lot of this is born not so much of what does God think about it, but what does the person sitting beside me think about it if I don't do it. And so in a, in a roundabout way, the focus becomes me. Come on now. And so we feel obligated. <laughs> it's my duty. Now, church, there's nothing wrong with volunteerism. There's nothing wrong with, with helping individuals. We know the Bible is replete with example of commandments and illustrations that, uh, you know, as James said, if you see a brother in need and shut up your bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Yes. 
And so we know that we need to reach out, but some individuals feel like they're the savior of the world. They're the fixer. And so no matter what is going on, they feel they need to involve themselves in. I, I, I feel obligated. I feel that I need to do it. Now listen, once we, we commit ourselves to it, the Lord wants us to stay with it until the job is done. And so the best thing to do is, you know, you got to evaluate. You have to prioritize. And do you realize that even as a child of God, there is nothing wrong with saying no. Except to God. Amen. Jesus talked about dutiful things. In Matthew chapter 25, there is the parable of the talents. The employer gave one guy five talents, another guy two talents, another guy one talent told them to utilize that and they entered into that contract and said that they would. It became their duty then. And so you see the Lord wanted them to, to, to go through with it. And those that, that had multiple talents and used them to multiply even more talents, uh, the Lord said, and uh, even the employer, but as reference to the Lord and us, uh, well, well done. You're a good and you're a faithful servant. And that's what God wants from us. But the one that had the one and, and just uh, neglected it, reneged back upon his commitment, uh, uh, well, you know, he fell into a different sort of a situation, obviously. And so, this, so once again, duties. Uh, a lot of these things, in fact, the things that we're talking about, there's nothing wrong with them. They're a part of life. They're part of what, what God has given unto us and even blessed us with. But the point of it is, is we as human beings, we have a way of messing everything up. God gives us something good and we take it to the extreme and forget about God. Stuff. 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 This really would be the first, if, if we had our way and if we had enough money that we didn't have to work, here would be our number one priority in life, desired stuff. Stuff I like, stuff I want. I almost meddled here. I tell you, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, some, some people say, pastor, you're getting dangerously close from preaching to meddling. <laughs> so one guy said, I do my best work when I'm meddling. Amen. <laughs> But you know, stuff, it's things we want. <laughs> gotta, gotta have it. And, and, and here's the thing with desired stuff, that even if we don't have the time, we will find time. And if we can't even find the time, we will make time. If it's something that I really want to do, if it's something that, and, and you know what? It could be something that's not necessarily sinful in and of itself. You know, the Bible tells me that in Psalm 37 and 4 that, that if I delight myself in the Lord, that he will give me the desires of my life. Heart. Wow. Now obviously the the 
first part is the crucial part. You can't just say, well, Lord, I want a new car. I want a new house. I want new shoes. I want a new dress. I want a new suit. I want a new whatever you could ever imagine of stuff. And the Lord's just bound to give it to you. But he said, I want you to find your delight in me. I want you to find your pleasure. I want you to find your desires fulfilled in me. And when you do that, praise God, yes, the desires of your heart, because when you delight in the Lord, your desires are going to be godly things. It's going to be things it's going to draw you nearer to the Lord. You're not going to allow stuff that's here for a moment and then has gone. And we're not going to be able to take it into eternity with us. Stuff. I mean, you know, the Lord may come right now and all of that stuff that we've worked and labored for. Hopefully it's left behind. Yes, sir. Because if you still have your stuff, you've missed it all. You've missed it all. Yes. You see, with, with desires, it's a two-edged sword. There's good desires and <laughs> desires that's not so good. And the Bible tells us that both of them gives us pleasure. Yes. Yes. Obviously, there's pleasure in the Lord in doing godly things. But in Hebrews chapter 11 and 25, you know, it talks about Moses and it talks about the pleasure of sin for a season. But the problem with desired stuff that is that is not of God or it's not necessarily bad, but we take it to the nth degree and make it bad because it becomes the sole purpose of our lives. When, when that happens, you know, anybody that's honest, the pleasure of sin does not last. It is only for a season. And in the aftermath, when it's said and done, you feel used. You feel empty. You feel sick. Come on. You feel the stuff of the world cannot satisfy. It leaves. Well, you know what? I could go on and on and on, but, but here's, here's the point and the place that I want to get to. Is God help rich gold eyes and not to allow you, my king of glory, to get lost amongst and amid and in all of my stuff. The last one that I want to look at, and, and, and remember here, this is the way most people would prioritize. Like I said, desired stuff will be number one, but we know we have to work. Yes, amen. Come on. And dutiful stuff, you know, some people, we're getting to a point, some people will say anything, but they'll never follow up on it. So they're not even, that's kind of down the ladder now, and probably desired stuff would be, would be second. But the fourth thing, and I could mention several other things in between, but what about divine stuff? Holy stuff. Godly stuff. As I look at my list of priorities and how I've prioritized, where does God come into the picture? As I've often said, we do everything else in the world with all kinds of other stuff. And if there happens to be a minute or a second left, okay, God, that belongs to you. I saw on a billboard of a church when I was at work last week, it said prayer should not be your last resort. It should be your first priority. <laughs> 
And so God and the things of God should not be last resort for us, but it needs to be at the top. You see, th this is devil stuff. This is not God thing. This is a devil thing, a Satan thing of completely putting our priorities on their head. Of what needs to be first is we tend to put last. We know what Jesus said. He was talking about stuff. He was talking about clothing that is necessary, food to eat, to be able to exist. Everybody needs that. But in Matthew chapter 6, that uh, Jesus talked there in 33, he said, But seek you first the kingdom. <laughs> Come on, church. But seek you first the kingdom of God, and then all of these other things will be added unto you. Things is basically the same thing as stuff. Hallelujah. That if you seek God first, he said that all of this other stuff, I will provide for you, and I will work it out for you. But so many times, God, God, he doesn't get first dibs. He's way down the ladder. And he gets that which is leftovers and that which is last. There's another passage, and I'm getting ready to close here. But it's in Luke chapter 14 and beginning at 15. And there's several verses there, but Jesus is giving the parable out about the great banquet that this individual wanted to have a banquet. So he sent out invitations to everybody and uh, told them about this banquet and what was when it was going to take place. When the day had arrived, he sent individuals out to remind folks that the great banquet is today. Uh, hope to see you there. Want to see you. And then you get into this litany of excuses. Uh, tell the master I'm sorry. I just bought a house. <laughs> Stuff. Sorry, I can't make it. Tell the master I just bought me a brand new vehicle. I bought myself some oxen. And I need to take care of that stuff. The other one said, oh, I'm sorry. I've just got married. And you know how important having weddings and doing all that stuff. I can't make it. And so the Bible talks about excuse after excuse. And the parable is that finally he told them to go out into the highways and the byways. And anybody that would come in, allow them to come in. But those that were invited but offered up excuse, they miss the banquet. In other words, they miss God. They miss banqueting and enjoying the presence of God and even in eternity. Listen, church, your and my eternal destination is way more important than stuff. It rusts. Yes. It rots. Yes. It decays. Yes. That's why Jesus said... Lay up your treasures in heaven that rust and moth and man cannot break through and steal and destroy stuff. Stuff is here for a moment. It may be necessary in, in, the, in this material world in, in which we have been created in flesh. But even as I've said the good things of God, we got to make sure 
that stuff doesn't become more important to us than God and that we lose Jesus in the midst of our stuff. Father, I love you today. I appreciate you today. And Lord, I pray that if Rich Gold Eisen is on the verge of allowing stuff to become more important than the King of Glory, help me to reprioritize. Help me, Lord, to come in around this altar and to renew myself anew and afresh unto you. And Lord, as we have sung and as we worship prior to the message, I, I want to give everything to you. I want I want to be what you want me to be. I want to be able to accomplish all that you want me to accomplish. And Lord, I don't want stuff, stuff that's here in a moment and then gone. And God, it's not really that important at all. And so God, help me, help us. Help us in these last days. The devil has things and stuff. He has bright lights around it. He has all these advertisements that you can't live without this stuff. You've got to have your this stuff. Uh, it'll give you the best gusto in life, this stuff. And so God, that all that the world portrays, help us to be attuned unto you. And Lord, that our delight is found in the Lord and not in the pleasures and not in the desires of, of this flesh and the places and, and the people and the propaganda, a Lord of this world. Jesus is my prayer in his name. Church, you know what to do as I look